Welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to the two most entertaining sports podcasters in, in America. Beat LA podcast. They just launched a podcast using Riverside. Let's jump into it, boys. What's the podcast about? When you first started going down this road, you had to look at what tools are available. Zoom's obviously available. Why'd you land on Riverside? How'd you pick it? And then we'll go through the other tech stack that we use for you guys. Sure. Paul, do you want to take this? No, Mac, because you're the guy that figured this out to begin with. I, I just tend to show up and talk for an hour. No, I mean, uh, when we decided to jump into this- Should we say uh, our names? What's your, what, Matt, do you want to, what's your, what's your name, Matt? Introduce yourself. <laughs> yeah, I like <laughs> yeah, it. I like it. Matt Ferrucci, and you are? Paul Rule, and we are the co-hosts, as Diego said, of the, the Beat LA podcast, which is uh, basically we're two Bay Area born and bred guys who live in LA, and we do a podcast called Beat LA uh, that is essentially focused on Bay Area sports- uh, and with some pop culture and entertainment stuff mixed in. Uh, we launched a couple of months ago. It was a, a baby of the writer's strike. Matt and I are both writers and performers, and he's a director down in LA. And we decided, hey, there's a writer's strike going on. Why don't we start a podcast? And that's what we did. And it's been growing leaps and bounds. We're having a great time with it. And uh, a little help from Diego, because he's the startup master. Well, I mean, it's just a button on that. I think there's a million sports and pod culture podcasts out there. So we just decided to throw our hat in the ring out of fun. We weren't going into this like, okay, let's let's build a pod and let's let's get out there as our brand. It was just basically Paul and I's conversations and text chains. But we did think we there was a niche there for us with Bay Area sports. Obviously, it's heavily skewed to 49ers, Warriors, San Francisco Giants, but also Paul and I have been writers and directors, actors in Los Angeles for 20 years. So Beat LA is a chant that you hear in every stadium and arena in professional sports. It's a phrase that is in the lexicon of pop culture. And we thought this would be a great title for the show. Not only is it a chant, but it's a mindset, you know, beating LA brings the city back to earth. It's sort of a middle finger to the smugness of Los Angeles that we are a part of. And we thought this would be a great way to build out a podcast. So we said, hey, let's 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 go for it. And that's sort of how it was birthed. I love it. And then, by the way, as a Celtics fan, you obviously already know that I'm a big beat LA guy already. So just by virtue of the name, I am I am in. I got the Celtic green on today with the pawn shop hat, bringing the America the best sports bar ever, soon to be. And so when you first went down the roadmap, obviously there's so many different tools on the market that you could have used. And so the listener here is going to be a business person, startup person. Maybe they want to start their own podcast or taking some notes from you, getting some inspiration here. And how did you how did you land on Riverside? I landed on Riverside. I was a guest on a podcast and they used Riverside. So that was my first introduction to it. As the sort of tech nerd, editor, director, Photoshop master in me, I said, oh, this is a really clean interface. So when Paul and I started to do this, that was the only place I knew of to go. And then in my research, I saw a few other platforms that were out there. Riverside was super easy, the interface. You know, it's funny, Paul and I, as we've done this, people have come up to us and said, how did you guys do this? This is incredible. What are you doing? And so it started out from an economic standpoint. I looked at Paul and I and I was like, how are we going to do this? We don't even know if this is going to be a success. We're not really putting any money into this. So do, to do it in person in a studio, mixers, audio digital recorders, XLR mics, plus the space and the cameras, that wouldn't have worked for us. But Riverside offers all of that to us. They, are, they offer the video component, the audio component. And it was really easy. I mean, we're in the same city a lot of the time, so we could do it in person. And we kind of prefer to use Riverside just because not only that, the stuff they offer after the fact with the video, the way we can clip 30 second clips with it. It's very, very user friendly. But like when I was during the pandy, I was doing a show and we were doing it on Zoom and the audio on Zoom. Did you just call it the pandy? I did. I did. The great pandy. Did you, did you have a nickname for it? I go with pandy unless you have. I, I know a lot about you, Matt. I didn't know, know that. It's like the panda. It's like Pablo Sandoval, the pandy. Okay, the panda. Doesn't it roll off the tongue though? I like the pandy. <laughs> I get it is it does. I don't have a pet name for the pandemic. I guess I'll work on one. Covey, 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 Covey,
During the Covey 19, the Covey Wovey 19, we did a show on Zoom and the Zoom interface was terrible. The audio was terrible. So as soon as I did the first taste test on Riverside, uh, it was so easy and we've just rolled from there. I agree. When I first started with Zoom, it was like we couldn't figure it out at all. The editing, the audio, the, they just wouldn't be synced or sometimes they would be in sync. And then instead of giving us an individual audio file for each guest, sometimes they would be merged, even though we adjusted the settings. It was kind of a mess. And as a tech guy, I just kind of like the innovation in the space where in general, things should get cheaper and easier to use. And so here we are today where, to your point, a podcaster doesn't have to have like Joe Rogan studio and a bunch of mics and all this stuff. It's nice to have, but you don't necessarily need to have it. You can just have your iPhone. You could literally start with your iPhone. And then if you want to have video, you know, before you'd have to get some cameras. Now you can just use uh, tools like Riverside, which is great. When it came to, okay, great, we're going to start a podcast. How did you guys go about thinking about the structure of it? Obviously, sports is a big part, but you guys crush pop culture references. There's a great succession video that's out right now. You should go to their Instagram, Beat LA Podcast Instagram, and you'll see this epic succession video. But how did you guys decide to structure the conversation? I mean, we're all fans of podcasts and we know what we love. And, you know, you kind of, what's the phrase you like to use, Paul? Borrow and steal from the best. What's the, what's the phrase you do? The good ones borrow, the great ones steal. So we're the great ones. And so we knew some of our favorite sort of pop culture sports podcasts, sort of the structure they've built. So let's not sort of build a new mousetrap here with it. The way we structured it, at first, we knew we wanted to give a little pop culture. To your point about the succession thing, you know, we've been working in this town forever. We're cinephiles. Paul and I watch an inordinate amount of TV and, you know, films and pop culture. And so when we talk, we a lot of times we're relating our sports to that. And I knew we wanted to bring that element to the show. But we didn't really know sort of how the sound effects and the sound clips and sort of the movie clips would take off until we released a couple of episodes. In that first episode we made, which was only 26 minutes, Paul and I were like, wow, we made a lot of sport uh, movie references to sports. Why don't we drop some clips in? And so we did that, and then our audience sort of dictated the structure. They're like, we like the best things. We like this. We like that. We want more of this. And then the, sort, the structure sort of appeared. The great thing, and Matt, Matt's our tech guy, right? And we finally have a production a bit of a production team now. Now we're on episode 12, I think. But Matt really, Matt and I made movies together. Matt's a one-stop shop. He figures this shit out. He can edit stuff. He can shoot stuff. He can do the whole thing. So I was very grateful for all the heavy lifting Matt did. But it really was just the two of us, no money, like no money out of pocket. And because we were able to do that, we were able to kind of play in the sandbox where we could figure out what we wanted it to be kind of on the fly. But, you know, I think also like my background is a half hour television writer. And so and I literally came up with, you know, in the age, age of the laugh track. And so there's a part of me in this that was like, hey, what's our studio audience here? And that's part of what we started doing with these clips and other things to make it sort of interactive in its own way with the audience. And um, anyway, so and this, from, from a structure standpoint, I mean, we kind of set it up that Matt sort of interviews me, I guess. And then it becomes... Uh, and we, I, I get a text from him a couple of days before saying, here, here are the topics I'm thinking of. You know, we go back and forth, brainstorm. We've had some guests. We're going to have more guests coming up. That's been an interesting part of the process too. But like here, we've got three guys here in Riverside just working seemingly seamlessly. Yeah. From a structure standpoint, the way we looked at it, somebody who I will not mention, but who I think is c- kind of the 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 guru, the uh, the the godfather of this genre. I saw a, a talk of his where he he basically said that that what they try to do is be the two. I think he said I'll paraphrase badly. The two most informed, interesting guys at the bar, and so that's kind of what Matt and I are trying to do. There's not a, there was not one of not a Bay Area sports pod that was doing that. You know, it's a top ten media market. And we were like, oh, okay, look, there's an audience here for this. And other guys are doing it in other places. Why not we try to adapt that, bring our own voices to it, and see what we can make make of it? Yeah, and a lot of these small town media are shutting down. A lot of these like small groups or sports net or whatever those things, they're not first, they're not entertaining. Two, the whole 24-hour news cycle is kind of silly. You can't talk about one game for that long. And so they're all struggling. No, that's right. The regional sports networks are, are shutting down. And then even like The Athletic is getting rid of their of their podcasts, their local podcasts. They're keeping some national podcasts. Um, so no, there's a real, I think there's a real market for it. We're finding that out to be the case because uh, 
people seem to dig us. Knock, knock on wood. I know it's early days. It's it's a highly entertaining podcast. I found myself laughing more and listening more about your banter between the both of you than I think about the sports. Obviously, the sports sprinkled in is kind of nice. It brings us back home, let's call it. But the, the hook of the sports and then the rest of the banter is, is, I mean, legendary. When it comes to who you like dream guests, like who, I mean, I, I would assume you guys are probably a couple degrees away from pretty much any athlete I would imagine. And so when it comes to the, the 49ers or just San Francisco, who do you, who would you want to get? Who would you want to get on the podcast? Oh, this is a great question. This is why you do what you do, Diego. We haven't even really thought of this. I think for me, and I can't speak for Paul because we've never really melded our minds on what our ideal guest is. From a pop culture standpoint, I love hearing interviews of people in another line of work, whether it's an actor or a director or uh, some sort of pop culture or some president or CEO or anybody who's a massive sports fan. And for them to talk about their love of a team, to take just pull a name out of a hat, if we had Denzel Washington, but we're not going to talk about his acting. We're going to talk about his love of his Los oh, Angeles sports teams. I love this. That would be like the best part of it. Or say we pulled, I'm just pulling a name, say we pulled Martha Stewart, but we're not going to talk about <laughs> cooking. We're not going to talk about cooking. We're going to I talk about this. her love of the Boston Bruins. So like, that's what would be the most fun for me. Is she and a also, Boston Bruin fan? I no idea. I just think of Nantucket or like Cape Cod with her. Okay? Sure. I just think of insider trading. I'm like, what do I, what, where do I place my bets in the stock market, Martha? Yes. And if we had her on, we would talk about what kind of like sports games go on in prison with her at a women's prison. But like, <laughs> if we had like access to the Warriors, Giants, or 49ers, I wouldn't want like the best player on the team. I want the most dynamic player. I mean, we would take those guests, certainly. Yeah. I mean, I was just thinking with this, I'm like, I don't know what kind of interview he'd be, but I was thinking the ultimate beat LA guest would be like Jack Nicholson. Because he's like Laker fan number one, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's yeah. obviously Jack Nicholson. You know, something to combine what the Beat LA podcast has turned into, which is this sort of pop culture sports amalgamation. But on the flip side of that, Diego, I would love to get an athlete and not talk about the sports. Like right. Debo Samuel, right. what is your favorite television show? What movies are you into? And it's just sort of invert that uh, what those that what that is would be really interesting for us. I like to do that in business. Like when I whenever you know we'll interview some people who are known for let's say a movie. I my the, my whole game is like all right. So you made a bunch of money, cool, doing a bunch of stuff that people know you for. But like, how did you get into the game of investing and understanding maybe real estate or understanding the tech companies? And so like let's say Draymond Green, you want a Draymond on. I my podcast would be way more interested in like how he decided to place his bets, being in San Francisco, being in the tech hub how many losses he has, and just like the portfolio that he's amassed. I'd want to know if he held on to his Smile Direct Club stock when that thing, because he, <laughs> he was part of that group as a venture guy, and then now it's gone bankrupt. So, But Diego, to, to the Draymond point, if we had Draymond, one of the things on our show that's kind of taken off is we do this like self-help segment. And it's done in kind of a tongue-in-cheek way. We don't get very deep, but we are very vulnerable on the pod. So if we had Draymond on, I don't think we'd want to talk basketball. We'd want to get into like the therapy, like what's rattling in your head? Are we uh, are we going to be a new man? What's going on at home? I want to know what he did during that suspension. Like what kind yeah, of, you know, yeah. did he take a bunch of cold plunges at uh, the Vent Ventana Ventures in the backyard of your studio? Did he go get some energy healing? That exactly. Kind of that would yeah, It's funny. Point. So today, I actually love this. I was on Instagram today. Our boy, Billy Simmons, puts a video out and he's telling Bill Belichick to come work with him two days a week because no one has hired Billy Belichick. And I was like, that's a genius move, right? Here he is on the market and Billy Simmons is offering a position to, to be a, a guest. Yeah, Belichick's <laughs> going to have, he's going to have a gap here, right? He'll, although he's like 74, is, he, is anyone still going to hire him or at 72? But that's a great idea. He also could come on the BLA podcast, Bill, if you're both Bills. And unlike what he offered Bill, I mean, he's so funny. He said, hey, Bill, we have a, a slot open for an hour on Tuesdays and Thursdays. If Bill wants to do it, he's going to pick any time that he wants to do it. <laughs> My favorite part of that clip was he, he says, Bill, you can wear whatever you want. <laughs> like the, the wardrobe's up to you. Unlike Paul, who changed his uh, shirt three times for this. Let's get into that. Let's get into the diva ship of I'm Paul. happy to do, I, I don't do that on our podcast, Diego. It's only because I, you're so handsome. I, I, was, feeling, <laughs> I was feeling insecure. How did you decide on how many buttons to leave open? Just so I, like how much, how much science goes into how many buttons you have open on that button up? 
it's always the same. A shirt may sit slightly differently, but in general, it's the same. I can go lower. Is that what you're asking me? Or you want it to go higher? That's great about Belichick. I, I had a theory that he wanted to coach the Falcons because he was just desperate to like coach indoors. Because he always just, you know, what are they, what are they called? The grumpy lobster boat captain or whatever they call him. Like he just always looks so cold in that half hoodie that he wears. Were you guys shocked that no one picked him up or has so far? Yes and no. I think okay. he's a Why guy who's well because he wants the power, and I think you know people like how you many have to blow up your whole front office to bring him in. How much time does he have left? So it's not like a something he can build out for like five six years. I think he just wants to get the record, the record right now for most wins. And yeah, I mean he wants he wants personnel control, and that's what got him run out of New England. Let's just say run out of New England because he had so much control. He doesn't have a very sterling player development resume at the moment. So I think he takes a year he off. He takes a year off and then comes back. Maybe Dallas, if they don't do well next year with McCarthy, then they can ixnay him. But there's a better team that he can walk into maybe next cycle. So how do you guys feel? You launched this podcast called Beat LA. Somehow the 49ers are making a run, right? It's almost like this amazing moment where, I don't know if you guys remember the movie with Jimmy Fallon, goes to Boston. They're filming this whole heartache about Fenway. Fever pitch. And then what happens? Red, the Red Sox win the World Series while they're making the movie. They had to reshoot the ending. Yeah. I'm How glad you said that, Diego, that? instead of me. So I feel like you guys are willing this. You guys are willing this for the city, it seems. I was saying to Paul last week, I, if the 49ers lost against the Packers, we got nothing. We're done. We have no content. So <laughs> I totally disagree. I totally disagree with that. Yeah. Are you guys prepared for the heartache content? So, so it's great when they win, right? You got a lot of oh, good yeah. clips, good energy. What happens when it's heartache energy? We've talked about it. We've, uh, you know, a big part of our show is the neg, the theory of the neg that Paul is sort of the, um, the pope of, which is to go negative actually means positivity will happen. So we've talked about the heartbreak. What did we've you call me? So you called me the Count of Monte Negdom. What did you call me? Count of Monte Negdom. Yeah, yes. I thought that was a yeah. good one. The Duke like of that. Neg. Yeah. So we're prepared. Um, it's not going to be easy, but we're prepared, right, Paul? We are prepared. I'm likely going to the game on Sunday. Matt is actually on on the on injured reserve at the moment. Yeah, getting over getting over the flu, so Matt's not going to attend with me. But we think we've got good positive mojo. Matt and I went to the NFC Championship together in twenty, I guess twenty twenty technically, the twenty nineteen season when they beat the Green Bay Packers to go to the Super Bowl. So. I'm going to try to be there this weekend to will them into the Super Bowl. By the way, Diego, they have been in the NFC Championship for the last five years. So I don't think it's just just the Beat LA podcast that's making this happen. You bring up a good point, Paul. Uh, Paul and I met in 2010 at the National League Championship Series between the Philadelphia Phillies and the San Francisco Giants. We both had seats. We got seats from CAA through different agents. And we were just sitting next to each other. I didn't know Paul from anybody. And Paul's standing next to me. Put on the hat. There you go. Outfit change number four has arrived. It's just a new lid, Diego. I have my Karnak lid that I put on sometimes to make my predictions. I got different hats now that I we're like- on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're using Riverside, which does a wonderful job of filming us. Can I finish the story, Paul? <laughs> no. No? Okay. Oh, well, no, this is about this is about us. I'm, I'm in the story. Met. Yes. That's how you, you met. You could absolutely you're sitting tell next story. To, You're sitting next oh. to each other. See, this is why I drive the ship, uh, Diego, yeah, and try to I keep see. us up. Because we'd be hitting icebergs. No, so this guy was next to me, and I've never heard a guy more negative. I mean, he's just berating Bochi. Fuck this, fuck that, why are you doing this? But there was a kismet there, and I turned to him, and he seemed friendly enough, and we just sort of bonded. We ended up winning the game, hugging it out, exchanged phone numbers, and no one stays in touch, especially if you live in LA, but we actually stayed in touch. And 13 years later, we have a podcast. And in fairness, the, the fact that we were two LA guys in San Francisco wasn't a total fluke. We were we were in the uh, the CAA seats at the time. I was uh, they were my agents. Matt has a good, good couple of good buddies who worked there, and so we were in their the, the shittiest CAA seats they probably ever had. But we sat next to each other, so it happened that there were two LA guys in San Francisco sitting next to each other. And then I think we ran into each other at at. The goal sports bar, didn't we? During oh, wow. uh, during the World Series, I'm like, hey, you're the guy. I think I remember because I probably had a few drinks. All right, the game, goal, the goal game was now very closed. stressful. No, I know. Now that pawn shop is coming, every other sports bar in LA is going to go out of business. By the way, Diego, can I say something about pawn shop? Absolutely. 
I recently met Diego, even though we both went to Paul's wedding. And for some reason, maybe we did talk, but maybe we had a few cocktails. I thought pawn shop was a real pawn shop until recently. And I said to myself, that's odd. Diego's getting into the pawn pawn shops, (laughs) but it's a great name for a bar. So there you go. We'll see what happens. It's funny. Our accounts were like, so what are you doing? Because the LLC is called Pawn Shop 33 LLC. And so my accounts are like, what are you doing with this pawn shop? I'm like, it's just the name. It's just the name. They're like, you're not selling pawn. You're not pawning. And I was like, no. <laughs> and they like, they wouldn't believe me. They're like, why would you call it that then? And I'm like, that is not your purview. I could call it blue. I could call it accountant suck and it's not your problem. So just just do your job. Don't worry about what the name is. But yeah, I, it, we'll find out how appropriate this name goes. Always time to change too. Always we can change the name. Do you guys have predictions? Do you do predictions on your pod? Do you bet? on sports on the pod we do predictions we do it every week it's funny when you're talking about san francisco i had predicted at week five the 49ers were five and oh and i had gone on the pod and i said we are going to go undefeated 17 and oh and run the table and we this this was literally like our second or third episode too and so all of our new uh, nascent audience blame matt when they went on a three game losing well what i was gonna say yeah we ended up losing three games in a row so it became a thing where matt please don't make a prediction because the jinx is in after that paul and i started picking against the niners every week and they started to go on a winning streak so you can't really take our predictions to the bank however recently i've been making predictions based off what i think is really going to happen whereas paul is still picking against the Niners to make them win. That's part of the negdom, Paul, wow. right? Wow. We, we talked about this last week. It's sort of like George, the George Costanza wave. The opposite always ends up becoming the case. So if you listen to our podcast, you can make a lot of money if you basically just bet the exact opposite direction of how I pick. So for example, last week, I was three for four in causing, is nagging teams into winning. So if you just wow. followed the neg, you would have won three out of four. You would have made some money. That's pretty good. Who do you got in Super Bowl? What's the prediction? Give me the prediction of who you got and give me the score of the winning team. 49ers. 49ers are in. Okay. 49ers are going to be there. They're going to be facing the Baltimore Ravens and our hearts is going to break again. We're going to lose in another heartbreak fashion in the Super Bowl to the Ravens. 27-21. 27-21. Ravens. The yeah. Baltimore over the 49ers. Okay. Paul, 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 you Paul? Want, Paul. Okay. This is, this, this is actually where my head starts to explode because this is actually neg once removed kind of, cause <laughs> I'm like, I got to go ahead. So I basically need to say that the 49ers are not going to be in the Super Bowl, which gets them to the Super Bowl. Right. Right. right so I think right. it's going to be the lions against, against the Ravens and the Ravens are going to win. So what I just did there is I neg the Ravens if they end up playing the Niners. Basically, it, we should have like the uh, someone from Silver Linings Playbook. That wasn't just a fictional movie about – that's a real thing. You, you move the remotes. I switch hats. We move places. We really lean into that. You know, I, I'm going to give you guys my prediction. I think Taylor Swift somehow wills, just completely wills pop culture and the Chiefs into the Super Bowl. And I'm going to go Chiefs, Niners. Niners win it with a kick. They win it with a kick. Taylor's heartbroken. She goes to write a song about this whole experience, breaks up with Kelsey, and launches an album in the fall while she's on tour in Austria, August. And it's the number one song to close out 2024. This is amazing. Look at that. That was great. You guys look stunned. You guys are like, "What is he? this guy doesn't even know what he's talking about. And he just did something there. Can we clip that for the uh, for the social media? Because we've been talking about how the NFL script writers already have it beat it out. And they want to get Taylor Swift to the Super Bowl, to Vegas, no matter what, because 100%. she's going to par- parachute down during the Usher concert, do her thing. Chiefs lose. She breaks up with Kelsey on the field, Paul. Makes that with Usher halftime. Kelsey gets so pissed, drops every pass in the second half. Well, if you're predicting the 49ers to win, she makes out with the 49er. And if she does, which 49ers? Christian McCaffrey. Swift? Christian McCaffrey's the upgrade. I don't know. Olivia Culpo might be a little upset about that. We do actually, we do a lot about the 49ers and their dating practices. Brock Purdy and his fiance, a lot of that ends, ends up in there, Matt. So we're, we're, we don't pretend to be the beat writers for the teams, right? That's not what people are coming to us for. They're yeah, no, for not, the not at stories. all. They're not coming yeah. for the hard-hitting analysis. You're the Us Weekly of the sports podcast world. There it is. The in-touch. 
90 Day Fiance, 90 Day Fiance. If you enjoy the Daily Mirror for sports, come to see us. Come listen to our pod. I love this. I think this should be this. There should be an entire segment just dedicated on your podcast to that stuff. So the dating, yeah, Kelsey or Kulpo, she's a New Englander. I think she's from Massachusetts. She was Miss Universe or Miss America. Miss something, yeah, yeah. Rare that that DNA comes out of that area, but good. For we her. we dug into that actually, Diego. Oh, like we did. Pod four. We did a yeah. deep dive on the whole yeah. thing. She yeah. apparently oh, yeah? was previously engaged to Danny Amendola. Danny Amendola. Patriot legend. Yeah. But I, by the way, speaking of the, uh, the the Chiefs game this weekend, I also wait for the refs to get involved on Sunday because the NFL wants Taylor Swift and the Chiefs in that Super Bowl. Did you hear about the referee? The referee they assigned to the Chiefs-Ravens game. There's already a big conspiracy. The referee they assigned is the referee who more visiting teams win when this referee is refereeing games. And the TikTok, Instagram conspiracy theories are out left and right. Taylor Swift turns American football into soccer. I mean, the numbers just skyrocket. And I'm I'm, I'm here for it. Your favorite DJ is going to be DJing the entire game on the Super Bowl, DJ Tiesto, Paul. Oh, great. That's great news. I, I hadn't seen that. Thanks. If that. you want to hear like this stuff for 50 minutes, come to the Beat LA podcast. Come to the Beat LA podcast. Recorded on Riverside. And so how do you guys, let, let me just do this. Let's wrap on some, um, some technical, tactical things. So when you think about the NFL season, it's coming to a close. So do you guys, do you guys cover, at some point you might have to cover all the sports, right? They're all running in overlap in parallel. Many of our episodes, we cover all the th- three major Bay Area sports teams now that we've are in the process of losing the A's. We were more focused on football at the moment just because it's the playoffs and it's America's by far most popular sport. A little sad our Warriors aren't better because that's always good content. We prepare to do them all. Baseball season's coming. I'm a big baseball guy. That's my probably number one sport. I know the most about it. I, I'm write, writing a book on baseball, traveled all the ballparks, all this stuff. I know a lot of baseball. And I was a, I, I was 0 for 11 with six strikeouts on the Princeton JV baseball team. It's a drinking game we have. Every time you mention that. Six strikeouts is I hard. hadn't That's played crazy. fast pitch baseball since sixth grade, and I decided to go out for the team when there was an ad, ad in, the, in the school newspaper. Matt None knows. of that story surprises me. How many shirts did you bring to the practice? Probably a lot. I look great. My uni, my uni, my uni looked crisp and amazing because I never played. Oh, that's funny, Matt. Well, you're going to say something? Oh, I'm just saying that you know, after the season ends, we do do a lot of other things on the pod. We do this thing called the best things we saw. A lot of people come to Paul and I for recommendations on TV and film. What are you watching? So we do have a pop culture element that I think can uh, hold the ship afloat, as well as uh, you know everything else we're going to get into. But you're to your point. Yes, we're going to cover it all. Will you ever cover Boston just because Beat LA is, is it's a, it's beloved by not just one city, but several? Well, to your point, Diego, so when we played you guys, the Golden State Warriors beat the Boston Celtics in the NBA Finals uh, three uh, years why? ago. Why it was so that? beautiful. It was such a beautiful thing. I had recorded... I went to game six. Is that and three I years ago? I think, it, I think Matt's connection's going. I think Matt's Riverside account's getting canceled yeah. right now. Hold on. I had recorded a video of Andrew Wiggins dunking the basketball. Crowd went crazy. And I turned behind me to the five overweight Boston Celtics fans that were there in San Francisco. And it, their faces were just, it was so sad. And I put a, a, a heart song from the band Heart. And it got 200,000 views. Draymond reposted it because the the demise the sadness of boston fans is 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 great content i love it almost as much as la fans having sadness so yeah you, the better you guys do the more we're going to come at you so i hope you guys get far i'm shocked you made it out alive i'm surprised they yeah. didn't try to fight you <laughs> but, but diego, diego we're, we're going to return the favor and have you on our podcast we we one thing that we have been doing is uh, bringing on fans of other teams. So we had a season ticket holder, actor, good buddy of Matt's, who of, of the Lakers on the week before we played the uh, Eagles. We had another friend of ours, fairly well-known actor, big Eagles nut job before that game. And it works nicely. Uh, so we're going to do a Beat LA Boston uh, interview with you the next time our, our teams are playing against each other in some sure. sort of fashion i'm excited to do it this was probably my audition for that and you guys got to see that i can do a little i didn't even you, know i had it in myself i didn't know i had the ability that to prediction was gold we're gonna, just gonna rerun that prediction even if it's not in the middle of the football season 
Just We're going to do it. It's and important gonna, to say yeah. Taylor Swift in every podcast so you can hashtag her and yeah. try to get some of those followers. I've done 250 podcasts. That's the first time I've ever mentioned her. So appropriate. We are bigger whores than that. We, we'll say her name when, <laughs> whenever we think it's useful to us. I love it. Well, look, tell everyone where they can find you. YouTube, new to YouTube, brand new on YouTube, which is good. Yes, we are on YouTube now, BLA Podcast. You can find us on Instagram, BLA Podcast, TikTok, as well as Apple and Spotify, BLA Podcast. Just subscribe, follow. We got some merch coming through the gate that Paul's real yeah. excited about, some giveaways and stuff. Follow us, we'll follow you back. Um, it's a lot of fun. I know you have a lot of choices out there for your podcasts, but uh, it's fun, irreverent. We don't take it too seriously, but it's a good time. Thank you, guys. Paul, anything from you? You want to say any, any, as the, what is it? The Count of Negdom? You want to give count us a- Count of Monty Negdom? I don't, outro? Think I, I don't think I'm that negative. In, in life, I'm very positive, Diego. You know me personally. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's just the hat I've always worn as a sports fan. I just, I, I was a big San Francisco Giant fan and they were, and still am, and they were a team that never won at all for a very long time and were really excellent chokers. And then when that changed, the nagging mantle remained. No, but anyway, just fun, fun chatting with you, gentlemen. Check us out. Check out Diego's podcast too. Yeah, man. And Thanks it, for having us on. We really appreciate it. So yeah. yeah and if you're walking through, you know, Hancock Park at some point, you want to watch Diego <laughs> play some, see some tennis and, and some pretty tight shorts. Stop by the uh, Los Angeles Tennis Club. That's all. Are you guys a doubles team? Are you guys doubles partners? Paul and I were undefeated in 2023 uh, as doubles partners. Wow. Diego's very inspiring. He's very positive on the tennis court. Runs everything <laughs> down. We have a good time. But we're not exclusive partners. We date around on the tennis court. We're not there yet. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, share with your friends, your family, or anyone you might think might benefit from the conversation we've had today. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. We'd greatly appreciate it. Your feedback helps us improve and reach more people who can benefit from our discussions. The best way to stay connected with us and get the latest updates on future episodes is through our social media channels. You can find us at Startup Storefront. We'll be back next Tuesday with another great episode. See you then.